let us bow at his feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See what our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. We're going to sing Go Hero. Go Hero, go Hero. You conquer the grave. You free every captive. And break every chain, oh God. King of Kings. Amen. Let's lift up our hands in reverence, in surrender. Oh, he's worthy of our worship. As we were created to worship, the only one that is worthy and his name is Jesus. Worthy of every song you could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise you could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, Jesus, the name above. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one. Jesus, the only one we could ever say. Oh, he's worthy. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We sing in holy. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me. Fill your heart and fill me with your heart and lead me. In your love to those around me. 
if you would, you'll make me so change. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above. Jesus, the name above every other. Jesus, the only one. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, and He's worthy. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for You. Oh, we live for You. We're gonna sing holy. Holy, there is no one like You. There is none beside You. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. I will build my Kingston, amen. God is really moving there. I know he was here last week and did an exceptional job. Uh, God is really doing something there, but we don't want God to stop, amen. We want God to continue to save people, raise up men and women, raise up disciples, and that church be blessed, amen. Let's pray that God's hand of protection will be upon Pastor Brandon and his family. Uh, let's pray for one another, amen. Um, let's lift up our own needs as well. I know we have our needs, whether it be financial, you know, mental, emotional. Uh, maybe, maybe um, health issues, you know, whatever the case is. Listen, God is able to meet our needs. Amen. He did it 2,000 years ago and he can do it today. The Bible says God is uh, uh, never changing. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today and forevermore. How many believe that? Amen. Uh, let's come together and begin to pray. Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Father, we're so privileged. Father, we are honored. Father, we're so grateful that we can be the last of the creator of creation, Lord. And Father, I pray that you would take firm control of this service, Lord Jesus. Father, we have no confidence in the pleasure of God. We have no confidence in our giftings and our abilities, Lord. But Father, our confidence firmly rests upon you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray that you Lord oh Jesus, Father, speak a word, O oh God, um, that will transform our minds and um, that will transform our hearts, O oh God, um, a word that will bring deliverance, O oh God, um, a word that will bring comfort, O God, um, a word that will bring encouragement, Lord oh Jesus. Father, we lift up Pastor Brandon and his wife, that Kingston congregation, Lord, um, I pray for your hand, O oh God. Um, 
Father, continue to move, oh God. Father, let revival break out, oh Jesus. Father, I pray for many people to be saved, oh God. And establish in that church, oh God. Father, I pray, Lord, that you give this couple of wisdom, oh God. Father, I pray you give them people, oh God, that are willing to serve, oh God, one another. Heavenly Father, I pray this church to have a hand, oh God, in changing this nation, Lord. Heavenly Father, move in full of today, Lord Jesus. Father, be coming, Lord, and expecting, Lord, and we do something new, oh God. We do refresh us, oh God, Father. We do give us power, Lord, and dominion, oh God. Father, let us not be the same we in, Lord Jesus. Father, meet the needs of your people today, Lord Father. Father, touch people, heal them, oh God. Father, bless people, Lord God. Father, accelerate people, Lord Jesus. Father, let people leave their Lord Jesus, a renewed Lord God, more in love with Jesus than we were yesterday, Lord God. Heavenly Father, there is no one like you, Lord God, the King of glory, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we have no concern with so God, the one that is capable, Lord God. Father, Father, we have no confidence in our own ability, in the flesh, Lord God. Let not the flesh be glorified in your sight, Lord God. Heavenly Father, I pray that your spirit will grab hold of everything that we would do here in this place. So, God, Father, be magnified, be glorified in the sight of your people. In Jesus' name, I pray. And the church shouted. Amen. 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 Turn around and greet somebody. Amen. Make someone feel welcome. Amen. Okay, how many are ready to hear from God? Amen. Listen, man, God is going to help us today. I'm really excited. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have a great time. Okay, before I read uh, the passage for today, you know, in, uh, in 1990, uh, two thieves disguised as police officers stole 13 pieces uh, of artwork uh, from a museum in Boston. And um, they... The stolen artwork was valued at over $500 million. That's a lot of money. You know, for years, law enforcement agencies and investigators tried to figure out who stole it, without, but, but they, they had no success in kind of tracking down these people. Uh, but in 2013, what happened was they reopened the case. They reopened the case, um, and, and they offered $5 million for any information leading to the recovery of the artwork. You know, uh, as you can imagine, the reward kind of generated uh, new publicity, I mean, new interest, and people start kind of calling in and start, uh, the information start, started pouring in from like all corners of the country and the world. Um, and actually, the artwork was uh, recovered. You know, now I don't know the ins and outs uh, of, the, of, the, of the case, but I can guarantee this much, that the substantial reward played a key role in the recovery. You know, there is something in every human being that wants to be rewarded. Let's be honest. Listen, if you say no, you're lying. Amen. I know you're interested in no, Pastor, you're not just going to love Jesus, read my Bible and pray. Listen, stop lying. <laughs> we want to be rewarded. Amen. You know, I want to preach a sermon that I've uh, entitled, What is the Point? Turn to your neighbor and say, What is the Point? Amen. Amen. From Matthew 19, verse 27 to 30, the Bible says this. Then Peter answered and said to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, Surely I say to you that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, we ask that you would just take full control of this service. Father, speak to us and help us. Uh, edify us, Lord Jesus. Father, give us a new revelation, Lord. Uh, change us from the inside out. Take firm control of this service once again. In Jesus' name, I pray. And the church shouted, Amen. Amen. Okay. You know, let me tell you why I love the Bible. See, the Bible is made up of real people with real lives. 
and real needs. Amen. Uh, and then here we see Peter asking a very real question. He says this, see, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? You know, if I, I believe this. Peter was asking the question everyone was thinking. Have you ever been in a room and you're thinking the question, uh, you're thinking of something and somebody asked the question and you're like, hey, praise God, man. <laughs> praise God. Because I was just thinking that. <laughs> and he's, he, really and truly what he's saying here is this. Jesus, what is the point? And I love the fact that Jesus doesn't rebuke them. He doesn't say, how dare you, Peter, say such a thing. You're so carnal, man. He doesn't say, you're so unspiritual. Instead, he reassures them and tells them they will have a reward. See, following Jesus is not without reward. John 14, 27, the Bible says this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Listen, there are millions of people who would give everything they have to get some peace. There are millionaires. There are people, uh, businessmen, amen. Listen, they, 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 they have money, they don't know what to do with the money they have, amen. But yet their soul is restless and they give all that they have. They would rather give all that they have to get some peace of mind, to have some rest. People of status, they're famous. People want their autographs. People want selfies with them. Amen. When they come, they roll out the red carpet. Amen. They're driving in cars we can only see on the, uh, on the roadside. Amen. And here they, they are. They're their suits cost more than our houses does. Amen. And yet they cannot find rest for their souls. They cannot find peace. And they would trade it all if they could just have some peace. You know, we hear this so often, we almost become immune to it. You hear peace, we get it. But the Bible says, this is what Jesus offers. You know, this word peace is used to describe exemption from the rage, excuse me, and havoc of war. Have you ever been in a war? Anyone here? Any soldiers? War veterans? No? Have you seen a movie? A war movie? And can you, have you seen the havoc that war causes? Things are blowing up. I mean, tanks are here, limbs flying off everywhere, heads being blown up, things like that. And this is what he's talking about. In war, there is shooting, there is bombings, there is chaos. But see, when you have Jesus, you are exempt from this chaos. Not the actual issues, but what the war brings. The chaos that life brings, the chaos that your uh, bills bring, the chaos that sickness brings. You can have peace in the midst of the war, is what he's saying. Think of this. How can you... Imagine if you're a soldier, you're in the middle of the war and things are being blown up left, right and center. How can you have peace? But Jesus says the Christian, the believer, the one that put his faith in Jesus Christ can be like that soldier in the middle of a war. He can have peace in the midst of the chaos. Listen, this is the gift. Romans 5, 1, 2, the Bible says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into, into this grace, in which we now stand and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Listen, we have peace with God. Um, see, every soul that does not know God is discontent is unhappy, bitter, depressed. See, this is the result of not knowing God.
you know imagine imagine you were on the run amen okay imagine you've done something terrible you're on the run from the police eh? you're hiding uh, and stuff like that how many know you're you're really and truly you know in prison you know in prison you know behind bars you're free you're free but yet you're not free because you can't go anywhere you want to go you can't go to tesco amen they'll be like hey look wanted criminal <laughs> you can't you can't go to the restaurant that you like to go you can't shop you're gonna have to send somebody to do the the simplest things you would usually do see because you don't have peace with the law you can't go where you want to go you can't do what you want to do do you guys remember bin laden Bin Laden, eh? Isn't the biggest, one of the biggest criminals ever, right? You know, uh, killed innocent people, dictator, did, did hor horrible, horrible things, right? Um, you know, uh, do you guys remember when he was killed? That the American soldier shot him, right? He was hiding in the cave, I believe he was. Um, listen, this guy had money, he had power, he had status. But he wasn't free. See, this is what it's like. Life without Christ. You can have all of these things, but you're hiding in a cave. Life is not bliss. You have money, power, respect, all of these things, but you are a prisoner to your sin. You are bound. Listen, if you don't have Christ, you are on the run. You're going from one place to another, trying to escape. You're taking drugs, you're drinking alcohol. You're going from one relationship to the next, and, you, and you're trying to make money. But see, when you follow Jesus, you're rewarded with peace with God. See, this is the uh, most desperate thing every man and woman needs. They need peace with God. See, when you don't have peace with God, um, you can never have, never have peace within yourself. See, people are looking for peace within themselves. They're going and doing all this meditation and, and going from one course to the next course, seeing therapy, uh, going to therapy classes and all of these things. But one thing they don't understand is this, that what they're looking for is found in Christ Jesus. See, they think, you know what? I don't have peace within myself. Let me find myself. No, you need to find God. And God will bring peace to your inner soul. See, this is what we're missing. And this is the reward, if you want to call it that, of following Christ Jesus. See, reward is a benefit. And this is the benefit. See, this is the point. The good news is that be rewarded in other ways whilst on earth. Mark 10, 29 to 30. So Jesus answered and said, Surely I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands or for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold. Now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. See, Jesus understands that following him means sacrifice at times. He understands this. Sacrifice in time. Sacrifice in relationships. Money. Our own desires. Listen, this is good news if you made, if you made any sacrifices for Jesus. See, if you have sacrificed for Jesus, he does not forget it. He will reward you. He says, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time? See, the Bible talks about how those who trust him will receive rewards in heaven. How many want to be rewarded in heaven? But how many want to be rewarded here on earth? Amen. I want to be rewarded. Listen. Uh, in, 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 in eternity, eight years is nothing. But on earth, it's a long time. Amen? And I want to be blessed while I'm here. 
See, Jesus understands that we have to live a very real life here on earth. And because of that, he says, don't worry. You will be rewarded this lifetime as well. That's good news, man. Listen, I want to encourage you today. Often we are focused on our rewards. We are so focused on getting blessed. We are concerned about making money. Instead, I want to encourage you to make some de decisions for Jesus Christ. Make some sacrifices. Get involved in church. Come on outreach. Go on impact teams. Follow up on someone and bless people. Give. Open up your home. Give your time. Go all out for Jesus and he will bless you. Listen, when you make sacrifices for Jesus Christ, it is never in vain. He take note of every sacrifice you make. Listen, he took note of a widow that put two mites into the offering. To us, it's nothing. Amen. But Jesus said, listen, I like that. I like that. Because it was a sacrifice. I mean, if I have a million pounds and I give somebody a pound, that's not really a sacrifice. <laughs> but people are like, hey man, listen, I sacrifice. That's not really a sacrifice. It's costing you something. Matthew 6.33, very famous passage of scripture. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. He says, seek. Do you know what that means? It means to search for. It means prioritizing. Imagine you lost something there. Very important to you. Don't know what it is, man. Maybe, ladies, you lost your Mac makeup. Or I don't know, man. And they're like, hey, it's gone. Brother, I don't know, man. Maybe you lost your eyelashes. Now. <laughs> I don't know, you lost something in your house and you don't want to leave your house. You stop everything to look for this valuable thing. You know, I need to look for this thing. Maybe it's keys. You're seeking this thing. You're prioritizing this thing. You could be late to meet somebody. You're late to work. Be like, Jesus, I can't leave the house without this thing. This is what Jesus is talking about. Seeking. He's talking about prioritizing. But notice it says, seek first. This means there are seconds and thirds. See, Jesus is not against us seeking after things. He's not against us wanting nice things and enjoying life. He's against us prioritizing those things above him. He said, listen, you can have seconds and thirds, but the first must always be me and my kingdom. Psalms 37, 25, the Bible says, I love this scripture. I have been young. And now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Listen, this is David speaking. He has lived life now. He's, he's an older man. He's a mature man. And he has come to this conclusion that God always takes care of his people. So listen, we don't have to beg for promotions. We don't have to beg for money. We don't have to beg for jobs. See, God is the owner of everything. And he will take care of those who belong to him. The, the Bible says, David is speaking and he said, listen, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. No, his descendants begging bread. Listen, we're not beggars. We're not beggars. We don't go out there into the world and, and talk to uh, unsafe people, whether it be at work or our colleagues or whoever. Listen, man, borrow me a, ten, a tenner. Give me this and give me a promotion. We, we pull it on their arm. No, we don't beg because God is the owner of everything. Amen. I go straight to the author of creation. And I say, you know what, God, this is what I need. And God will bless me. God will promote me. God will elevate me. He will excel me. He will give me what I need. And can I be honest with you? I fall into the trap. Where I've gone to my manager or whatever, and, I, and I, in my head, I'm like, Royston, why are you begging? Why are you begging? This person is not even saved. You're acting like they are in control. They're not in control. 
It is God that sits above the heavens and he is always in control and he wants to bless you. James 1.17 Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Listen, we sing that song, You're a Good, Good Father. But when bad things happen, we forget about that song. Amen. <laughs> Listen, these are not just lyrics that we sing because it sounds nice. No, we sing it because we believe it. He's a good father. Listen, the Bible tells us that every good gift comes from this good father. He knows your need. He knows what you lack. But please hear me. Don't waste your time waiting for your blessing. Instead, invest your time in Christ and his kingdom. And God will take care of your need. Let's bring this to a close. But see, the truth is this. There is a time for your blessing. <clears throat> Second Kings 5 verse 26 and 27. Then he said to him, did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Therefore the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence, presence leprous, as white as snow. See, Naaman was the king of Syria. You know, the Bible actually says he was a mighty man, an honorable man. But the Bible also says he was a leper. You know, this is the man of stature. But how many know leprosy is not pretty? You know, when you, when you, uh, when you have leprosy, you know, the, if you know the Old Testament, you look down upon, you know, your, your, uh, uh, people don't rate you. Uh, no one wants to go near you. Here is a man that had a big problem. But through a captive girl, he hears about a man named Elijah. And this woman is like, this little girl is like, listen, I know a man that, that if you go and see this man, he will help you. He will heal you. And he goes to Elijah and Elijah says, listen, go into the river Jordan and dip seven times. Amos like, listen, bunny, <laughs> not doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm the king of Syria. What are you talking about? You know, but he humbles himself. How many know if you want blessing sometime, you got to humble yourself, right? He humbles himself. He humbles himself, you know, um, and, and he goes and he does what Elisha called him to do. And he dips seven times. Uh, uh, this is just a thought that came to me. But think about that. Here's the king of Syria in the river Jordan. He just dip in there. <laughs> Can you just picture that for a second? People are passing by. They're like, hey, what's my man doing? <laughs> that looked like a joke. <laughs> It looks odd. Yeah, people are mocking him. But sometimes that's how it is, man. When, when, if you want the blessing, amen? That's humility. Anyway, he does this reluctantly and he's healed. And Naaman is overjoyed and, want, and wants to bless Elijah. But Elijah refuses. But then there is a man named Gehazi. Okay, uh, you, know, if you can call him Elijah's uh, servant, disciple. Uh, but he's like, oh, man, what's wrong with Elijah, man? Too righteous, man. Too holy. So he runs after a uh, uh, thingy, uh, Naaman, and he says, you know what? Yeah, whatever you wanted to give Elijah, give it to me. I'll take it. Yeah, he's, 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 he's getting this reward now. But Elijah's not happy. And he says this, is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards? Sheep and oxen, male and female servants. See, Gehazi got greedy. It wasn't the time for the reward. See, many people are running after things at the wrong time. You know, they run after marriage and relationship at the wrong time. See, people invest money at the wrong time, in the wrong thing, in the wrong business. Listen, there are men that, that God had called to become pastors and missionaries. But they ran after a career, a job, and put the call of God to a side. And they're not in the will of God today. So you can get a good job, a good career at the wrong time. 
If it is taking you away from God, then it's the, it's the wrong time, brother. It's the wrong time, sister. See, the truth is we are masters at trying to manufacture our own blessing. And this is what Gehazi did. He tries to make his own way to the blessing. And Elijah says this, Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. Listen, by trying to manufacture his own blessing, Gehazi invited a curse upon himself. Naaman's leprosy was transferred to him and he became a leper. All because he ran after something at the wrong time trying to manufacture his own blessing. Listen, it is dangerous when uh, people in the church, God's people, the saints, try to manufacture their own blessing. They end up in a deep hole. See, this is the lesson on shortcuts. Listen, don't try to take shortcuts to destiny. Don't try to get to your blessing your own way. You know, sometimes um, I like ways, right? How many like ways here? Yeah, a ways is good when it's working right. <laughs> but so sometimes when I'm coming to church, I, I, you know, certain that traffic and whatnot, so I try to use ways to try and get here as quick as I can. And sometimes ways is taking me into roads. I'm like, oh, what's he doing? I know better. So so I take shortcuts. I'm like, oh, let me go left, let me go right. Uh, and then I realize, oh man, the road is closed. <laughs> oh, there's. Uh, uh, more traffic even than usual and then I have to turn back and go the way which ways try to kindly show me sometimes ways knows better can I tell you that God knows better he knows when to reward you he knows when to bless you and he will bless you no doubt see God's timing is always the best timing Yes, there is a time for your blessing. But there is one thing that is always available. Forgiveness and redemption and salvation. See, God is a God of second ch chances. Even in the church, saints, before. This is why I love the story of David. You know, we rave on about David, you know, the man that, uh, what's he called, um, Kill Goliath with, with, a, with a slingshot. You know, uh, done incredible things. No man could touch David. But he fell. A great fall. But God didn't say, you know what, listen man. You're the king of Israel. What are you doing? I can't, I can't restore you. What's people going to think? No. Go reach us out to him. And restores him and gives him a second chance because God is always ready to forgive. Second Corinthians 6 2, where he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. See, now is the day of salvation, he says. See, now is the time, the day of deliverance. See, God wants to forgive people. He wants to deliver people all the time. See, if you're not saved, today is your day. See, if you don't know Jesus, today is your day. If you're a backslider, today is your day. Listen, maybe you've been coming to church for a while and maybe maybe you did something. Maybe you fell from grace, quote unquote, amen. And now you're sitting here. You're, you, you feel guilty, amen. This sin, this thing you've done is eating you up. Can I tell you that today is the day of salvation? God can restore you and bring you back to your former glory. See, people often ask me, especially when I go on outreach, listen, what is the point of Jesus dying? That doesn't make any sense, but it's simple. He saw you drowning in your sin. He saw me drowning in my sin. He saw you bound. He saw we've been addicted to things. We saw, he saw us in depression. 
addicted to so many various things, smoking, alcohol, watching pornography, and doing all kinds of madness. Listen, this is the point of the death of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, Jesus died and simply because he saw men and women drowning in their sin and they couldn't get out of sin. They couldn't find their way back to the maker. So Jesus came and bridged the gap. See, this is the point of the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, you are the point. Listen, no matter where you go in the world, they can always count on Jesus Christ. No matter where you go in the world, you can always have this reassurance that somebody loves me enough to die for me on the cross. Listen, that is good news, man. Church, he died for you. What will he not give you? So you guys are waiting for some stuff, man. And I want to tell you, God is going to come through for you. He's a rewarder of the righteous. God wants to bless you. He wants to reward you. But see, he wants to keep your eyes on Jesus. And he will work it out. See, don't be so focused on the blessing you miss Jesus. See, be focused on Jesus so you won't miss your blessing. Amen? Let's give him praise. Come on. Amen.